Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It is December. We have almost made it through all of 2020. It's been an insane year. But I actually had a lot of fun creating these birth month flower tutorials for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed them too. So we're going to carry on with our last birth month flower. December has three, I think. And for this one, I'm choosing Holly because I think it is the most festive to do of the three. And, you know, it's just great to learn how to do for cards and gift tags or whatever you want to use it for. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to go through my materials. I am going to be drawing and painting in my cold press at your lab watercolor sketchbook. I have my pencil and an eraser and I also have these pens. This one is from Etcher. It's a size 02 graphics pen and it's waterproof. Um, and then I'm going to use this smaller one. Uh, it's a mono drawing pen from Tombow. It just has a smaller nib and it's better for um, shading but you don't have to have either of these. You can just use whatever pen you have laying around. So that's for the drawing portion and then I'll get into the painting portion later. So let's just start. So we are painting or drawing Holly, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of sketch out my shape first. I'm gonna do my initial kind of stem here of where I want it coming from. And we're gonna start with the berries. So I'm gonna do like a little cluster of berries, some overlapping that stem. Okay, you want it kind of irregular. You don't want it to be like completely symmetrical or anything because then it just tends to look a little weird. I'll do a couple down here like that. Okay, and then we are gonna have, those are gonna be connected to stems. So you can do little stems coming from them if you want right now. We're just kind of sketching it out first. Make sure they connect to that initial stem right down the center. And then we're gonna do the holly leaves. So let's start with a line coming down for the center of the leaves. And then you're just gonna be doing like these scoopy points. So have one point at the top and then scoop, point, scoop, point, scoop, point, scoop, point, and then come back down in here. Okay, and actually I'm gonna make this one taller, scoop 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 like that okay let's do another one maybe coming this way so point at the top scoop and point like that let's have one coming out this way start with that top one it's actually fairly easy to do these Okay, have another one coming down here. Like that. Maybe another one over here. And maybe we'll have a couple coming from behind. So we'll have one this way. This is gonna be behind these. So you don't have to do too much. It's just gonna be all in the shading for those ones. One over here. Like that. One back here. Okay. And then maybe we can just have like a small one just so it looks a bit more natural. Um, coming out this way. So we're going to do a bit of a longer stem so you can actually see it coming out. And then do a little, oops, like that. Maybe another one coming in that's kind of behind this big stem right here. So let's do the point closer. Like that. Okay. So now we are going to grab our bigger nibbed pen and we're just going to go over the whole sketch. Okay and then for the little berries you're just going to do a little kind of curve at the top 
like a little stretched out kind of U. Okay, so now that we've done the outline, let's erase all those pencil marks. Okay, and then we're gonna do some of the veins down the center. Like that. Okay, and this is gonna be really mostly about the shading, which is gonna make it pop. So any of the leaves that are behind, we're gonna do more shading on. So I don't wanna do too much shading on the leaves that are in front, um, because we want those ones to in the back to kind of look a little bit more like deeper into it. So I might do like a couple little lines like this on those front leaves and then do a little bit more line shading towards the bottom where there would be less sunlight. Okay, tucked behind those berries. Um, but yeah, so the, for these front leaves, we're just gonna do a couple little lines like that. And then towards the bottom, just do some a little bit of dark lines like that. And then this one is kind of behind the stem, so maybe we can do a couple, a bit more shading on this one. Okay, and let's darken that stem up and all the stems that are kind of connecting the berries. Just roughly shading. Okay, and now the berries, um, we're just gonna do a little bit of line shading. So just lightly towards the bottom of the berries, we're just gonna do some lines, leaving the top part white. So let me make sure you can see this. Okay, and then we can even go in a bit deeper towards the bottom to make it a little bit more. darker so we're just doing really faint lines and then darkening the bottom of those berries so for the lines for the shading you're curving with the shape of the berry really faint lines light pressure you don't want to press down too hard more so on the bottom of the berry but that's it Okay, so now let's do those um, leaves that are behind. So let's start with some lines coming into the stem and then right where they hit kind of behind those front leaves, we're just gonna do some, a bit more shading. So I'm gonna do some lines coming into the veins and then I'm gonna really darken it up this is called cross hatching, this, this type of shading. So you're gonna do lines one way, and then you're gonna cross hatch. So you're just making kind of like little X's. And the closer it gets to this leaf, the darker it's gonna be. So again, try not to press too, too hard, okay? You don't want it to be like crazy dark. Okay, and then on the other side too, 
is there be a shadow behind these berries and try and go with the shape of the the leaf okay so we're going in towards that like vein kind of shape and then the cross hatching the exact opposite way so they look kind of like little x's and then we're just going to make it a little bit darker right behind that leaf okay okay and that just makes it look like it's behind okay let's do this one too okay so going with the shape of where the veins would be on these holly leaves Okay, and then more right behind. And then cross hatch other way. Okay, and then make it even darker right behind that leaf. Now the way to make it look like it's fading, here, I'm gonna do a little demonstration for you. One second. Okay, to make it look like it's fading. So here's what I mean by crosshatch. Okay, I should probably put it in frame, that's a good idea. Okay, so you're doing lines like this. Okay, and then you're doing lines in the exact opposite. But because it's so dense right in this area, it's gonna be right, really dark right there and it's not gonna kind of blend out. So what you kind of wanna do is you're gonna cross hatch like that and then you're gonna start not right at the edge where the, the, those lines start, you're gonna start this way. Okay, so see how it's really dense right in the middle because there, most lines are crossing right there, but there's some lines over here. So it looks like it's gonna fade and kind of blend. So you want some lines closer over here, just a little bit, so it's not so dark, but then it gets darker, so it's, it's more dense here. I hope I'm making sense. I don't actually know if I am. <laughs> okay, let's try this way. This is really hard to do right now because the way the camera's set up, I can't really turn my page. Okay, so I'm doing some light lines this way. We're gonna make it more dense right where behind where the shadow would be. Do a couple lines up here to kind of fade it. And then again, more closer. where that shadow would be. Hopefully this makes sense. Okay, it's a lot easier to blend with watercolor, I'll tell you that. Okay, there we go, let's do this last one and then it's just about done. And there you go. Okay, so there is your drawing of your holly and now let's paint it. Okay, so now we are going to paint. So I'm still using my Etcher Lab watercolor sketchbook. I have my Winsor Newton Professional watercolors in my palette. I have my pencil, my eraser, and for my brush, I'm gonna be using this size six round by Princeton Snap. And let's just begin. Okay, so let's do the same kind of thing that we did at the beginning. Okay, so I'm gonna do some berries. Same kind of drawing. I mean, you can always change it up if you want. Like that. And I just wanna sketch this out lightly. So you can refer to my other sketch if you want, just because I want, I don't wanna see the pencil marks underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my shapes.
Okay, so I have my general shapes and I'm gonna do some behind after. I just don't need to draw it right now. So let's start with our berries because that will be the easiest part to start with probably. Okay, so I'm just gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna grab some Windsor Red. Okay, and I'm gonna start off with a light wash. So I'm just taking a lot of that pigment off and I'm gonna go over all of the berries with this light wash of red. Might be a good idea to go even lighter too so we can do some nice shading. And shading with watercolor will be a lot easier, I promise you. Okay, so if your paper dries fast, you might wanna shade your berries like one at a time. Um, this paper dries fairly slow, which is good, so I'm just gonna wet them all up and then we can go into shading. Okay, but if you're using something like Canson, you might wanna shade one at a time. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab some more red, more pigment, and I'm going to tap the bottom of my berries. Okay, try not to have too much pigment or water on your brush because then it will just take over the whole berry. I'm gonna wash some of that off, dry my brush a bit, and I'm just gonna blend it out a little so it doesn't look as harsh. Okay, but essentially you want one side of your berry darker than the other, if that makes sense. Okay, so this one's kind of just getting dark all over, that's okay. What you can also do if you find it's too dark all over, you can take your paper towel and just dab a little bit of it to get that little highlight. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some darker red. So you can mix your red with a little bit of green too. That will create a darker red, or if you have a darker red paint, I'm gonna use my alizarin crimson. Don't have a lot of water on my brush because I don't want it to bleed too much. And I'm just gonna go again around the bottom to get that darker bit. Okay, you really gotta watch your water control with this because if you have too much water on your brush, it will just end up taking over the whole berry. And if that happens, just dab it with paper towel and try again. Like that, okay? Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, this one started to dry a bit more than this one, so that's why that's blended a little bit better. So I'm just washing and drying off my brush and I'm just gonna blend out those lines a bit so it's not as harsh. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna take up some of that paint so I can get a little bit of a highlight and we can always add white at the end too if we want. Okay. So now let's wait for it to dry and then we can do the leaves. Okay, so now let's do the leaves. Let's mix our color. I'm gonna use some Hooker's Green Dark. And some Dioxazine Purple to make a nice dark green. This will be for more of the shadow. Okay, I think actually I might start with some Sap Green too. So I'm just gonna grab some Sap Green place it on my palette. Okay, and I'm gonna start off with a light wash of my sap green. So I'm just gonna go over the whole leaf one at a time. Make sure your berries are wet, so, or make sure your berries are not wet. Make sure they're dry so the green does not bleed into the berries. Okay, and then you're gonna grab some darker green and you're gonna tap it at the bottom. You can go down the middle to kind of create that line and it will fade out and kind of bleed a bit. 
go around the sides like that like that okay you can blend it out a little bit if you want so it's not as sharp just be careful around your berries there you go let's do it again we'll do it on this one now if you have berries that are in front of the leaves you're going to want to have darkness around where those berries are so i'll show you So try and paint nice and carefully around the berries. And we're gonna do the stem on the berries later because they're brown so they'll, they can go over top of the green and you're just gonna tap that darker green around where the berries are. There'll be more of a shadow right because those berries will be casting a bit of a shadow you can go down the center around the sides like that i'm gonna grab a bit more sap green maybe put it towards the top of it so it's a bit brighter and then grab some more darker green, maybe a bit more purple in there. Just go around those berries. So there's more of a shadow, okay? Like so. All right, let's do the next one. Start with your sap green. Okay, grab your dark green again right behind where those berries are and right at the base of your holly leaves and a little bit around and right down the center like so Tap around those berries again. Okay, so now before we do some of the leaves behind, we are just gonna wait for this whole thing to dry and then we will come right back. Okay, so now that it's dry, let's get some of those darker leaves behind. So let's create an even darker green, more purple in this, okay? And we're just gonna go right behind. You can draw it first if you want. I'm just gonna go right in and create the darker leaves behind. So it's, we're starting out with that darker color. And just try your best to go around those other leaves. that
Okay, I think I'm gonna do the stems for these ones because we're gonna have one behind. So I'm just gonna grab some, oopsie, some brown and a little bit of red. We're just gonna do the stems coming down before those other leaves just so You know what, you can outline kind of like the bottom of the berries too, if you want, just to make them a bit more um, sharper, there's the shape. <laughs> okay, let's get maybe these stems going too. Like that. like that okay and then last but not least you can just take some of that darker color and do some veins coming on those lighter ones right down the center maybe define that little stem a bit more like that and if you wanted to just, you know, brighten up some of those berries, you could too. Like the bottoms or something. Just add a little bit more red to them. Maybe a bit darker red at the bottom again, just to give it a bit more shade and last but not least if you want to do this you can you do not have to i'm going to take my dr ph martin's bleed proof white ink um, if you have white gouache white watercolor anything works i'm just going to take a little bit and i'm going to oops Put a little highlight on the top of these berries like that. And then you can even, you know, just highlight some of the, the leaves too. Just a little lines around, maybe down the center a bit. Totally up to you. like that okay and there you go there is your watercolor holly thank you all so much for watching my video i really hope you enjoyed it and i hope you liked this series it was a lot of fun it was challenging at times but it was also a lot of fun and i think it kind of helped the year go by a little faster anyway if you guys have any ideas for 2021 any kind of birth month whatever. I don't know what else there is. Yeah. Just let me know in the comments below and I will consider it. And hopefully we will find something just as fun. And that's about it. I hope you all have a wonderful day and don't forget to subscribe to this video and follow me on Instagram for even more. See you guys later. Bye.